Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Jesco, the Rising Phoenix Dev. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about Truth View Input, which is a brand new uh, kind of design pattern for game development. And if you know anything about MVC, Model View Controller, or MVVM, Model View View Model, then you will kind of have a general sense of what TVI, Truth View Input, is all about. Now, there are some differences uh, between TVI and MVC and MVVM. So, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about TVI. TVI is a design concept used to make it so that your game is completely 100% testable. Now, the way this works is you have your truth, which is pretty much your entire game and those can be broken down into separate uh, classes you have your input which is your databases input uh, from controllers keyboard mouse whatever touch and then you have your view which is everything you see on the screen so that can be your models your sprites your uh, terrains whatever those are all part of the view as well as whatever you see on the game screen. <clears throat> so, to begin, let me show you a little bit about how I have my Unity screen set up. As you can see in the Assets folder, I have a folder called Asset. And then I have three separate folders, Input, Truth, and View. Now, Input, I have one class, and as you can see, there's nothing in it. And it's called Controller, PC Input. And the truth, I have player truth. So that is for the player class only. And as you can again see, there's no code to it. And then in the view, I have six different sprites and then a folder called prefab. And I have four of the six in a uh, prefab form. So I can just drag it on and voila, it's on the screen. Let me go ahead and delete that. Okay, so, let's talk about how the code is supposed to be written. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and load up uh, Visual Studio. And I will zoom in so that way you can see a bit better. Uh, player Truth, you can keep mono behavior on it. Because it needs to be attached to both uh, the play. Well, that and the input needs to be attached to the player. Now that we have this set up, we can actually begin writing our code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public vector 3, call it position, uh, P-O-S, I-T-I-O-N, equals vector 3.0. Plain and simple, very simple to understand. It's a variable that holds shit. Sorry, getting a phone call. Sorry about that. Had a telephone call, so I had to pause the uh, recording. Anyways, uh, we have a variable position of vector 3 that's set to 0, 0, 0, or vector 3, 0. So, the very center of the screen. From here, we can then create a... Uh, we need a public enum. And this is going to be called player state. Now we're going to create states for both 2D and 3D. Mainly because uh, I want to showcase how powerful uh, TVI is. So we're going to have move left. You know what? I'm just going to call it left, right, up, down, forward backward and stop pretty straightforward there next up we're also going to create a public player state oh, fuck sorry about that um <clears throat> it is about 4:25 in the morning for me and 
to keep myself awake, I decided to order coffee. <sighs> so, now that that's out of the way, and it has been delivered, so I can drink my coffee and continue this. Public player state, state, get, oh, return, underscore state. And now let's create our private player state, underscore state, equals player state at stop. Next up, we're going to create a float variable. Private float. Wow. Flat. Really? Spell correctly, Jesco. Underscore speed, and we're going to create that to be uh, 0 0.5 float. Now that that's out of the way, we can actually move the player. Private void move player. And we're going to switch. And I'm just going to tab. And we're going to switch on score state. There, that gives us all of our default ones. For left, we want position dot x so minus equal minus equal underscore speed simple position dot x plus equals underscore speed and just to keep everything kind of aligned position dot y minus equals speed position dot y plus equals speed finally forward and back position dot z plus equals speed And of course, position dot z minus equals speed. And we can actually remove the case statements for both default and stop. So that's all pretty simple. And now we actually need to move the player. We need public methods for this. So public void move left and we're just going to set the state to be player state dot left and we're going to do this for all of them so move right I'm just going to go ahead and populate the methods move up down void, void move up public void move backward and then public void move forward Simplify this dot right dot down dot up dot backward and dot forward. Simple enough, right? But there's one other thing that we need to do. Well, two other actually. Oops, public void. Stop move. State dot stop. 
And then we need to do update. And this can be private, so move player. And then we want state stop. And that's all we need to do for the truth. Now, for this, we want player truth underscore truth start. Private void start. We want this to be underscore uh, underscore truth equals get component player truth. And then we want update. And for this, if input dot get access horizontal is less than zero underscore truth dot we want move left if input dot get access horizontal less than zero or greater than truth dot move right if input dot get access vertical is less than zero truth dot move down if input dot get access vertical is truth dot move up and this is all we need to do now that the code's done <clears throat> We can say throw the hexagon because why not? And then on the hexagon we want come on they we want the truth and we want the input. I press the left key. Ooh, what's going on? Notice that it was updating in the truth, but not with the game itself. And you know what I forgot to do? Transform.position is equal to truth.position. That way, the view, which is this, is reflected what is going on with the truth and now we see it goes down and up down or left right up down but it moves very quickly and I actually don't like that so let's go back over to the truth because what we're going to do is we're going to create a new float private float and we're going to call this underscore delta time. And we're going to set it to be equal to zero float. Now, we're going to do multiply by underscore delta time for all of these. So I'm just going to copy. Oh, no. There. 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 Now you may be wondering, why are you creating a float and calling it delta time? Because actually calling delta time itself is not testable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, what we are going to do here is we're going to create a new float in here and call it delta time as well. And then we're going to set underscore delta time to equal delta time actually wait a minute that is reversed <clears throat> let's do delta time is e wait a minute Hold on. I'm confusing myself give me a moment 
Yeah, we want underscore delta time to be equal to delta time. So we're just going to copy this portion and paste it. Now this does break our input code, which is completely fine to be honest. We actually don't need to do that with stop. So now we need to go in and true dot move left. Add time dot delta time to the very to the argument. And we're gonna set the argument problem. There. So the value from time dot delta time is going to be passed to the method, which then gets fed into the delta time variable, which is then fed into the switch statement. Convoluted? Yes, but that's what we need to do. So now, we'll play, and as you can see, it moves a lot slower than before which means we can modify that speed variable. So notice we had it at 0.5 float. We're going to change it to 5 float. And voila! Much better. And as I stated before, <clears throat> this allows us to be able to fully test our game. We don't need to worry about what our game looks like at all when writing the code. It completely decouples the visuals of the game or the controller, the control type from the game itself. So now what we can do is I'm gonna go ahead and save this scene and I'm gonna go over to 3D scene. I'm going to switch this back. As you can see, there's a cube. Mm, but I don't like the cube. 3D object, let's go with a capsule. Looks a bit better. And let's do that. Mm, let's change the camera a little bit. There. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the truth whoa, on the capsule, the capsule, capsule, whatever. And again, it works just as it did in the 2D one. But here's something else we can do. We can also add Notice how we have get axis vertical. Well, let's look at something here. We can look at um, input. And we can look at what fire one is, which would be joystick button zero. So we can do fire one and yeah fire one fire two so now I'm gonna do if input dot get axis fire one wait a minute that doesn't sound right dot get button and it's going to need the fire one then uh, truth dot move forward time dot delta time if input that get button 
fire two truth dot move backward time dot delta time so now <clears throat> here we go left right up down mouse one mouse two beautiful right so I'll go ahead and save this scene and then I'm gonna jump back to the 2d scene now you may say it's 2d it shouldn't work and of course make sure you switch it back to 2d view and camera perspectives orthographic so now and switch it to the hexagon and notice we can still press those buttons and it's not doing anything now if memory serves once it goes below the amount that camera said it should disappear yep so we have the option of being able to say okay what do we want to have active which is beautiful for TVI so we could make it smart enough to detect whether or not the game's in 2D or 3D. And that's really not that difficult to do. I'm not going to showcase it here today. I need to hide some stuff for my actual tutorial that I'm writing for Game Dev Academy. But if you like it, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share. This is Jessica the Rising Phoenix Dev, and I'll see you next time.